So most of you, I'm sure, have heard about the 7.8 magnitude earthquake that hit Turkey and Syria. And what made matters worse was the 7.5 magnitude aftershock that came after the initial earthquake. Now, they had more than 100 aftershock earthquakes following the initial earthquake. But a 7.5 magnitude aftershock is fairly uncommon. So it's disaster on top of disaster, followed by a rescue effort that's hindered by horrible weather conditions, and it's just genuinely catastrophic. Now, the initial death toll was just under 3,000, but as of today, the New York Times reports 4,300, although that is likely to rise, and that estimate is actually a more conservative estimate that I've seen. I've seen some numbers surpass 5,000, although right now it's very difficult to determine how many people have been affected, killed, injured, and whatnot. And um, as I film this video right now, the rescue effort is uh, going on. So the New York Times explains rescuers in Turkey and Syria worked overnight and in near freezing temperatures to comb through rubble in search of survivors after a powerful earthquake and aftershocks collapsed thousands of buildings, killed more than 4,300 people and raised the specter of a new humanitarian disaster in an area of the world already racked by war, a refugee crisis and deep economic troubles. The initial magnitude 7.8 earthquake hit at 4.17 a.m. local time on Monday, according to the United States Geological Survey, and was also felt in Cyprus, Egypt, Israel, and Lebanon. Hundreds of aftershocks, including an unusually strong 7.5 magnitude tremor, struck Turkey in the aftermath, the USGS said. The series of shocks was the deadliest to hit the country in more than 20 years. Now, let's look at this map here, courtesy of the New York Times. It kind of gives us a sense of how massive the initial earthquake was and the 7.5 magnitude aftershock as well. And as the article pointed out, multiple countries felt this earthquake. That's how massive it was. And it's really difficult to fathom just how destructive this earthquake was. I think that hearing the numbers don't really do it justice. So I do want to give you a sense of, as to how bad it was by looking at a couple of videos. One of these videos follows a Turkish reporter, and as he's filming, you see an aftershock hit and how devastating that is. <laughs> The sounds there, Max, are absolutely terrifying there. So the reporter here is saying as we were heading to the rubble to film search and rescue efforts, there were two consecutive aftershocks with a loud noise and the building you are seeing on my left was brought down to earth. There's lots of dust. This local resident here, he is covered in dust. It looks like a scene from a disaster movie. I can't imagine the terror that these individuals felt as they're already scrambling because they just experienced an earthquake, but then you get another aftershock and then you see buildings collapse around you. It's just genuinely chilling. Now, one more video that I want to play for you, uh, followed with some information by CNN. They kind of update you on some of the individuals that they found. And um, it's it's heartbreaking, but I think that this is important that we uh, we watch. More than 120 aftershocks hit after the earthquake, including one almost as powerful as the initial quake itself. Buildings crumble to the ground with people fear trapped inside. Others nearby having to run for their lives. Rescuers trying to reach those who are stuck under piles of concrete and debris. Like this little boy in northern Syria. You can just make him out in this video here, buried under the wreckage. Thankfully, he was pulled to safety. Rescuers also pulling this little girl from the debris in another Syrian city. The U.S. and other countries are offering whatever help they can. And President Biden said he has directed his team to provide any and all assistance immediately. Yeah, really, really devastating. And it's it's nice to see them finding survivors. You know, finding the little girl from the rubble obviously was very, very nice to see. The problem is, you know, how many disabilities will she have because of this you know she um was probably injured on top of that lifelong trauma so it's not just like the initial destruction that this causes there's going to be a lifelong impact that this has L loved ones 
that have been taken from individuals. And it's just very, very sad. Um, one important thing to point out is, as NPR explains here, that civil engineers say that outdated building techniques used in both Syria and Turkey essentially assure disaster with multi-story buildings just pancaking, which is the way that they referred to it. And so this is something that every single country has to take into account, right? Because earthquakes can happen anywhere. It happened to Turkey. It could happen where I live. It can happen where you live. So building buildings have to be built in a way so that way they can absorb these types of earthquakes. And not every single building is going to hold up with an earthquake that big especially, but these are things that you have to take into consideration. Make sure that there's regulation so companies aren't cutting corners and whatnot. But that going forward is something that I'm sure that they're thinking about in the future. Currently, they're just focused on the rescue effort because this is a massive, massive effort, as you can imagine. Now, Twitter user Ja Rain tweeted at massive streamers like Hassan and Mr. Beast asking for help since thousands of peoples are going to need tents, heaters, blankets, diapers, and food, of course. Now, Hassan actually responded to that saying, absolutely devastating. I was in Istanbul in 1999, which was a 7.6 magnitude earthquake quake this was a 7.8 i will do everything i can to help and that he absolutely did by raising more than seven hundred thousand dollars in a single day and for the second day in a row he's raising money once again and at the time that i filmed this he is at seven hundred thirty thousand. i think that by the end of the day it's not implausible to think that his audience will surpass uh give enough donations so that way they surpass 1 million, which is really encouraging to see. And of course, Hassan Piker is an individual who is Turkish. Um, so it's nice to see, you know, everyone come together, put aside politics, put aside geopolitical issues and conflicts, and just acknowledge that this is a very human thing. Like experiencing this level of destruction, it's... It's something that none of us ever want to deal with, but we all could possibly experience in our lifetimes. So to have the world come together, various communities come together, streamers come together and try to raise funds for this effort is really encouraging to see. And it's kind of like the silver lining where this type of disaster fo fosters at least a small level of solidarity amongst fellow humans but either way it's just catastrophic and my heart goes out to the people of turkey and syria and all of those who are affected um as the new york times article pointed out people in syria have already been dealing with a lot for a long time it's a war-torn country so to have this added on top of everything that they were already experiencing i just it's a level of destruction that is almost incomprehensible. Like literally, I don't think that our brains can actually process that level, that scale of a disaster, right? So um, yeah, I will link you to Hassan's donation link down below. And I hope that there's more money raised for this because they're gonna need all the help that they can get. But priority number one right now, of course, is making sure that they save as many lives as possible. So my heart goes out to anyone who's affected and I, I just hope that um, the weather eases up so that way they're more successful at finding survivors.